The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Jennifer Edelstein, and I'm the Marketing Assistant for Industrial Controls. Today's webinar is Gaining Energy Efficiency via Automated Valve, presented by Larry Boyd of Industrial Controls. The presentation will take about 45 minutes, and after the presentation, we will take some time to answer your questions. During the presentation, feel free to enter your questions into the chat interface on the right-hand side of your screen, and they will be addressed at the end. We will also open it up to voice questions, where you can raise your hand, and you will be unmuted so you can communicate directly with the speaker. Now we are going to hear from our presenter. Uh, Larry has more than 30 years of experience in applying valve technology in a wide variety of vertical markets. Larry works closely with plant maintenance and engineering staff to maximize their valve automation performance utilizing the latest proven technologies. His webinars are informative yet easy to understand for the novice. At this time, I'll pass, pass the presentation over to Larry to get us started. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, glad you could join us this morning. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, the, the topic of gaining energy efficiency through automated valves. And that also is going to include control valves and some of the technologies that are related to that. I've actually chosen what I would, what I would term a quite diverse uh, program agenda. Uh, I probably could have selected over 100 different examples of, of areas where you could save energy and save costs through uh, automation and, and related valve automation. But uh, I, I try to pick some interesting ones, and again, they, they are diverse from the standpoint of some would be used in, uh, in HVAC building applications, some would be used in power plants, and some would be used in, in traditional chemical plants or, or, or the uh, gas and uh, uh, petroleum industry. So, so it is a, uh, a kind of a wide-ranging uh, uh, program agenda. Number one is, uh, control valves, they're inherent leakers. Um, a lot of people don't realize that some of the, uh, that the control valves, even when they're brand new, uh, do have an inherent uh, uh, leak rating. So we're going to discuss that. Uh, automatic boiler blowdown, how it can save you dollars and, and um, a lot of energy. Are your valves really closed? I know it sounds like a silly question, but, but uh, my experiences are that uh, a lot of manual valves out there, you can't really tell whether they're open or closed. So, uh, wireless sensors to determine valve leakage. Uh, this is a huge uh, evolving market right now. The wireless technology is expanding, expanding, and it's coming more and more into the valve automation side of the business, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Automated testing system to verify that your automated valves are working properly. This is a new product that's actually been out for, for several years, or I should know, about three or four years, and it's, a, it's really starting to be accepted in the industry, and again, we'll go into a little more detail on that, and then finally, building management and uh, saving energy through a, a new tandem uh, set of control valves that are used for heat exchangers and air handling systems, so. <coughs> Okay, uh, the first item on our, on our agenda is control valves and inherent leakers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't realize that the control valves uh, are designed and manufactured to certain uh, shutoff class ratings, and that the four that I have encircled here and, and, or enclosed here in this uh, the box are the typical ones that you're going to see control valves fall into. Um, a typical control valve will have a class four shutoff uh, right out of the box if it is a, like a typical globe valve that has a metal-to-metal -metal seat. If the valve has further machining done and lapping of the plug in the seat, it, you can get it up to class five shutoff, which still has a, a little bit of, of leakage. Uh, the highest leakage rate is class six, and that typically is would require a soft seat, such as Teflon or Kynar or an elastomer type seat, um, typically a ball valve or a, or a high-performance butterfly valve that has a Teflon or an elastomer seat. 
uh, would fall into the class six. A lot of people, by the way, think class six needs bubble tight shutoff, but but uh, you can see that actually it does have a few milliliters per minute of air bubbles that are allowed to pass by. So it, even class six is not really considered bubble tight. Okay, uh, I'm going to say some facts here and and um, see if if, uh, if we can kind of determine what you might expect out of a control valve, the typical control valve that you would use. Uh, standard control valves, even right out, right out, brand new, right out of the box, uh, like this low valve here to the right, usually have a, a shutoff radio in class four. And as we showed in the previous screen, class four is, is 0.01 percent of the rate in TV. So some examples of uh, potential energy leakage that you'd have if you had a one-inch flow control valve with a C to B, which is the flow capacity rating of 12, and you had 100 pounds of steam going through it, you you would leak approximately 0.4 pounds per hour of steam. Now as you work your way up here at three inch and six inch. Uh, you can see that the leakage amount does go up, and, and if you got up to the six-inch valve, which there's a lot of six-inch flow control valves out there, uh, you'd be leaking about 8.5 pounds per hour, which may not sound like a lot, but when you annualize it, that's about 74,000 plus pounds per year. So <clears throat> it's important to understand that your that your control valves uh, are going to leak and they're and they're actually designed to leak in many cases because their their real job is to be throttling and controlling not necessarily having great shutoff okay uh, just to expand on this on this conversation is that the, the class 4 shutoff rating is, is actually based on having zero pressure in the pneumatic actuator with full spring force pushing down on the valve uh, and what I mean by that is if the, the valve was just sitting at rest and there was no air pressure in the actuator, the full uh, spring rating or full spring thrust of the actuator pushing down on the plug into the seat would give you that class 4 shutoff. But typically there's an electro-pneumatic or a pneumatic position that's installed uh, in these uh, on the control valve. And uh, it, it, when, it, when the uh, controller gives a signal to close the valve, the positioner moves the valve to where it thinks closed is and goes into a balanced state of holding. Now, uh, I, I'm going to explain that a little bit more here. The, uh, when a positioner actually moves the valve to that, that closed position, uh, there actually is still potentially some air pressure underneath the diaphragm or, or on the, the air side of the, the actuator. So the result is, is that the valve is probably actually not in the class 4 shutoff because it's, it's actually just balancing of where the positioner thinks it's taken it to a closed position. So more than likely it probably is a class 3 shutoff which happens to be 10 times more of a leakage rate than class 4. So now that 8.5 pounds per hour of steam on that six-inch valve previously is now up to 85 pounds per hour, and uh, and just to compare it, <clears throat> if it was hot water that actually was flowing through the valve, you'd be leaking four gallons a, a minute. And I have this schematic over here is, is, is emphasizing that potentially you could have a, if you had 35 or 40 pounds of air pressure that you're using to open this valve, and the springs are pushing down. Uh, if the springs were strong enough, they would close that valve, and you can still have 10 psi of air pressure in there that's just balancing that valve in, in what it thinks is a closed position. So <clears throat> it's important to understand that that uh, because of that, your valve may not be closing off even as good as uh, it was designed to. Okay, the, the uh, picture at the bottom of this slide is actually some control valves that uh, I sold into a, a large power company. These were two-inch, 2,500-pound class 
uh, globe valves that were used uh, as de-super heater spray valves, and they were in about 2,300 psi hot water. These valves were were designed uh, at at uh, class three shutoff. And uh, the customer did approve it at that time, but it turned out that uh, that was not a good thing because they were when they were running in an idling situation, uh, they needed to have the valves shut off tighter than that. And these things were actually passing about 20 gallons per minute of water even when they were fully closed. So uh, we had to make some modifications to the valves to get them up to class five shut off, and that involved some uh, some lapping of the seats and the plug and to get the higher the higher rating, but Again, just be aware that, that your control valves uh, inherently do leak, and and uh, that should be taken into consideration if you're trying to save energy or control your energy. Okay, some solutions to resolving control valve leakage is, and this is number one in my mind, is that control valves should not be used as double duty for a shutoff valve. They were designed to control, and they're not really designed for the tight shutoff. Okay, this this uh, photograph to the right that was actually on the previous screen emphasizes the proper way to do this. Uh, again, the control valve should have an isolation valve upstream for both safety and maintenance. If you need to do any work on this control valve, uh, which which will happen from time to time, you need to be able to isolate that valve. So in this case, we actually have a, a, a Thing, something that happened in two stages. This manual gate valve was actually the original isolation valve that was installed, but uh, they were looking to uh, to automate this this package, and they later installed a metal seated uh, class six shutoff high high temperature high pressure ball valve with a pneumatic spring return actuator and a limit switch on top. So if you're going to, this is an ideal situation because if you're going to to install a, a isolation valve upstream. The nice part about this is is that is that when they, this valve, when the control valve gets closed, when they signal to close it, at the same time they can trigger the control system to shut the upstream isolation valve, and they will have full confirmation that that valve is closed. Thereby, you will not have any leakage going through that. One of the another reason why you want to have a isolation valve upstream is that the fact that that control valve is going to be leaking at some low uh, capacity rates there, and that valve is just barely cracked like that. Uh, but some of the velocities that actually go through that uh, those those minute openings can create some wire drawing or or erosion uh, fr from the the leakage going through there. And that's especially true if if it's uh, if it's steam. It actually can do some damage there if it's seeping through there. 